Welcome to Kangan Institute and Bendigo TAFE. Kangan Institute and Bendigo TAFE are one of Australia's largest and most trusted education and training providers. We offer a wide range of courses from English language programs to internationally recognised certificates and diplomas, delivered in state-of-the-art facilities and online. All the technology that we use is user-friendly. The facilities reflect exactly what the modern industry is like. It's very professional. Everything that I learn, I can use and adapt. Our courses are developed with industry and many of them offer pathways into Australia's leading universities. When I first went in the lab, everything was there as it was supposed to be in a hospital. It's a really good institute, the institute where I wanted to be. Melbourne is a vibrant multicultural city. It is a great place to live and study. All of our campuses are easy to access by public transport. I love Melbourne so much. It's easy to go anywhere I want by public transport. I found that Melbourne is a really beautiful city. Australian people are easygoing. It's quite amazing. Their level here is up to their best standard. Melbourne has one of the most in-demand education sectors in the world. Getting an Australian qualification will allow students to open up so many doors. The curriculum is top of the world. If there is anyone who wants to study in Australia, they'll definitely recommend it. Bendigo is one of Australia's most historic and cultural cities, surrounded by beautiful Australian bushland. It's located in Victoria and only 90 minutes from Melbourne. The teachers have a good sense of humour. That is important because when you are happy, you learn more. We facilitate students' dreams. We have a community-minded learning environment. The better the communication is between us and the students, the better that they will learn. I teach at Kangan Institute because it is a fantastic environment. The teachers and staff are very helpful and we assist in every way that we can. To be honest, my teachers are really brilliant. They teach you everything. They are always here even after classes. They don't hesitate to help us. As an international student studying at Kangan Institute or Bendigo TAFE, you'll feel right at home. You'll get a chance to make friends with fellow students in class and on campus. We'll also help you settle comfortably and safely into life in Melbourne or Bendigo with our dedicated international staff. You can adjust yourself and live life happy. I would highly recommend the experience that I've had. If you think positive about your future, it will happen. When you are studying in Australia, you can find their way. Just do it. Follow your dream. Do what you want. What are you waiting for? Start your journey today. Enrol now. Good evening. Hi. Thank you for those that joined us. My name is Selda Koch and I'm in the International Department at Kangan Institute and Bendigo TAFE. I hope you enjoyed our introduction video. What I'm going to do is uh, share a presentation with you and then introduce my colleagues along the way. Okay. So we are located in Australia, and I'm hoping that you might have researched and um, have found some information about why Australia is such a great study destination. In addition to the location, because it is very close to Thailand, uh, it's very multicultural. We are an English-speaking country, so it's ideal to come and practice your English language skills. We are very safe. Uh, innovative, um, the cost of living is quite low in comparison to some other countries, and we have global recognition. Why study in Melbourne? So Canyon Institute and Bendigo TAFE is located in Melbourne. Bendigo TAFE is in regional Victoria. Um, so Melbourne is renowned for its multiculturalism. We have a lot of cafes and bars. Um, public transport includes trams, trains and buses. It's very accessible, particularly from all of our campuses. Our climate is amazing. Um, we have a lot of sunshine, which you are used to as well. Um, it's amazing for shopping and we celebrate all of our sporting uh, events throughout the year. So. 
The education system in Australia uh, comprises of high school, and we are a TAFE, so we are in the middle, and then a university. So traditionally, students that complete high school have the option of going through TAFE or going directly to university. Um, TAFE is a good option because it also leads to university, and it, the TAFE is very popular for the practical element. And when you take that pathway, it does give you credits towards a university degree. So why choose TAFE? The acronym for TAFE, it stands for Technical and Further Education. Um, it means that there are lots of practical placements and training within the, the, the teaching that we do. We are government owned. Um, we have very small class sizes, lower fees, and apart from English language and automotive, students are learning with Australian students. Um, our, our facilities and campuses are very broad, um, and we have very strong industry connections, which I'll cover through the next few slides. So Bendigo Kangan Institute, we have 10 campuses. We have many enrolments. Um, we're very strong, and we, ha we have been operating for 165 years, so that's quite old. So within Melbourne, we have five campuses. Now, all of these campuses are uh, run dedicated courses, so you don't have an option uh, of where you study. Um, all of our courses are very accessible and close to public transport, um, and they all have the facilities and the equipment to deliver that course, uh, the, ex the course within that campus. So Bendigo is in regional Victoria, so it's about an hour and a half away from Melbourne, um, and we have five campuses there. The two main ones for international students are Bendigo City and the Charleston Road. So our specialisations across our institute is uh, obviously English language, um, we also have a dedicated automotive program that's very popular with international students and we receive a lot of applications from Thai students for this course as well as in fashion design and beauty. It's a very popular, there are the three most popular courses for, uh, for Thai students. We also offer courses in health and community, commercial cookery, baking and some business and IT courses as well. So we offer lots of support for all of our students across our institutes, and in particular for international students. We offer free airport pickup. We have teaching coordinators per course. Um, we have study skills support as well. We have a dedicated uh, international student support officer, um, as well as the counselling and the, uh, the recreational services. We run a dedicated orientation and graduation program for international students. Uh, we have an employment centre that will assist students in um, preparing resumes. We'll be advertising work that's available for international students to apply for uh, and can uh, provide interview techniques um, and our teaching coordinators are the most crucial part of our support services because they are the ones that will be seeing and are engaging with our students on a regular basis. I mentioned our industry partners earlier. So this is just a fraction of our industry partners that we have at Kangan Institute and Bendigo TAFE, and they are really important um, because they may offer work placement for our students, so students uh, can go there and practice what they are learning at the institute, or they provide the facilities and the equipment to enable our students to undertake the, the practical uh, training at our campuses, so they are really crucial. And having uh, been a, a government institute for many years, we have a strong rela relationship and connection with all of our industry partners, and it could lead to long-term work as well. 
So now I'm going to introduce Mira, who is our Director of Studies from our English Language Centre, and she will talk to you about our English Language Centre. Hi, everyone. Um, well, we run three different programs at our Alicos Centre. Of course, we have the General English Program, the IELTS Prep, and the English for Academic Purposes. Now, students, of course, will have to do a placement test, um, and we will allocate the levels accordingly. But students are also invited to um, either participate or um, learn a little bit in the IELTS prep and English for academic purposes if their proficiency level has met the requirement. So in English language, which is a very popular course at our centre, um, this, that's all about um, extending your knowledge of English and increasing your confidence uh, when you're communicating with people. Now, we do cover all the different skill areas, um, you know, the reading, writing, listening and speaking, but learning is done in a fun environment based more so on everyday examples um, and topics of interest, which will equip you with the language skills for you to, you know, either learn further English or participate participate in the work environment. Now, as for IELTS, now IELTS, of course, um, in our IELTS course, obviously, um, the teachers will prepare you with skills and strategies that you need to achieve your desired score for the IELTS test. Now, all our teachers who run these courses are IELTS, uh, have been IELTS examiners or IELTS teachers. So again, um, the four different skill areas are taught. And of course, under the skill areas, you also learn some sub skills in pronunciation, grammar, and vocab as well. Um, during the IELTS prep course, you'll also be exposed to the different test procedures, the formats, and the question types, which are really important for students before they undertake the IELTS test. So you have a good understanding of the test format and you know, and you learn all the diff um, the the effective strategies for the listening, reading, um, writing, and speaking as well. Now, for English for Academic Purposes, obviously, um, this is a higher level English program. Um, once you've done, once you've completed your English general English, uh, or you do start your course at a higher level because your proficiency is higher, you may qualify to um, to undertake the EAP program. Now in this program, it's designed more for students who want to take further studies, um, either in vet or in higher education, like bachelor's, for example. This course, of course, will you know hone your English language skills while focusing on developing your academic English. So it involves preparing students with presentation skills, um, you know, running a running a business meeting, for example, or even teaching the writing. So you learn to write in academic styles uh, that is more suitable for higher studies. Um, you learn different listening, note taking skills, and also reading more academic texts and doing research and independent academic skills as well. So you know, we do run these three programs, but English language. Um, studies is not the only thing that we do run, uh, that we run at our center. Now, we like to ensure that our students, um, experience a really good, um, uh, English environment. At the same time, they also have a lot of fun at the center. Now, how do we do that? Um, obviously, we inject a lot of technology into the classroom. So we have our teachers with us today who will, um, talk to you a little bit more about what happens in the classroom. Uh, we do have smaller cl class sizes as well. We run lots of excursions um, and daily activities after classes, which are free, of course, for students to participate. Um, and um, and it, it's, it's more of a holistic program that we run. So you're not just joining us just for the language experience, uh, teach learning English, that is, but it's a more holistic experience where you learn not just in the classroom, but also outside the classroom on excursions, in extra classes, um, and anything else that we can think of, we do provide our students that opportunity. Um, I'm going to introduce to you two of my teachers. Um, they are Joseph, Louise, and uh, Louise Holman. So they are here joining us as well. And Joseph will tell you a little bit about 
how we run our classes, um, how we teach our students, and Louise will talk to you a little bit about the um, our activities that we run for our students. Okay, so I, I might start first. Uh, my name is Joe, as Mira said, and I'm a teacher at the Ellicott Centre, and I'm also the Ellicott Coordinator. So I've taught all of the levels, of course, and currently I'm teaching the EAP program which has been really fun. I'm really enjoying it at the moment, and so are my students. Um, so as Mira said, we, we like to try and have fun in the classroom, and we believe that, that learning a language is all about learning to communicate because language is all about communication. So we make sure that we have a very communicative environment in the classroom, so that means that there's lots of speaking, uh, lots of getting to know uh, your, the other students in the class and, of course, trying to understand and get familiar with the, the English-speaking environment in Australia. It's a, we try and make our uh, classrooms as diverse as possible, so we have a wide range of activities. We like to play games in class, whether it be uh, a grammar game or uh, some sort of speaking game. We like to even try to make reading and writing, even though it can be a little bit difficult and boring at times. We try and to even make that fun. So we try to make sure that, that all of our uh, four skills are developed in a holistic way, but also in an enjoyable way. So yeah, we, we like to keep it really fast paced. Of course, um, in, in our usual face-to-face -face teaching, that can be quite quite rewarding and, and quite easy to do. We're all used to that. But at the moment, we're also uh, doing this online. So we've, we've moon, moved to online classes. And um, I would ask if it's possible for April, if you could play the video to show uh, everybody a little bit of what we're doing online, if that's possible. Thanks. Okay guys, so today we're going to do a review of um, verbs that end in ed and their pronunciation, okay? So we're going to move the sticky notes to the different columns, yeah? Now, who is in charge of column T? Put your hand up. Yeah, me and you're in charge, good. Who's in charge of column D? Chris, yes, good. Who's in charge of column ID? Excellent. Okay, so I think you're wrong. Uh, yeah, I think you're wrong there. I think you're, you're wrong, wrong there. there. Yeah. Number three. That's one way of looking at it. That's one way of looking at it. Good. That's one way of looking at it. That's one yeah, way. Yeah. So, so actually, I would I would remove the that here. So I would just have um, one. one, yeah. That, that's one of way. That's one way. That's one way of looking at it. Yeah, good. Next one. <laughs> Cute. No. No. <laughs> Real good. Room. Room. Sorry. Room. R R U R O O M. Ah, oh, room. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. However, electric cars are reliable, economical, and non-polluting. Therefore, the government is spending millions of dollars to improve their technology. Okay. Do you have daily inspection? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's so maybe it's very clear if the killing is the story. Yes, that's why you stay with family, it should be like that. <laughs> yeah. I thought we could uh, review some useful expressions that we can use to check our homework in a minute, okay? So with your annotate, with the pen or with the type, can you please type in what these expressions are. They've all been mixed up, right? So I can show you the first one. Does anyone have ideas what the first one is? What uh, did you get for number three? What did you get? Number, number 
Good. Okay. All right. So I've just shown you going to check the answers. So remember, you guys are going to check the answers by yourself. We've done lots of expressions to practice this. Chris, you did really well last time, so you can take a break this time. Someone else needs to have a go at writing and controlling the discussion. Uh, remember, I will still be here, so I will contact you in the chat box and on the screen. Remember, you need two jobs. One, someone to type. Two, everybody needs to check their answers and talk. So you just saw some of the activities and the way that we're teaching online. Of course, we like to have a lot more uh, fun and interactivity uh, in the classroom, but you can see we're trying to rise to the challenge of online learning. Um, so now I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Louise, who is in charge of all of the fun extra activities and extra opportunities for learning. So over to you, Louise. Hi everyone. Hello. So as Joe said, my name is Louise and Joe told you a little bit about what we do inside the classroom and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we do after class time. So we have out of class activities. So when you finish class with us, you have a little bit of time to have lunch, whatever, and then you can come to some extra classes if you want. And these classes are free. Yeah. So these activities are designed to kind of develop a sense of community with the students so that they can um, meet other students, um, practice their English. And we have both academic style ones. This could be uh, writing help or grammar games, something like that. But we also have more social ones activities as well, such as uh, we've got Australian slang or fitness with Joe. Joe plays basketball sometimes. <laughs> and we also do other activities like that, excursions, lots of excursions. Now, we also do some social awareness um, activities with the students as well. So we've got um, a swap meet that we run twice a year. It's like a market where students can come and they can exchange their clothes or things that they don't need and get other things, and that's all for free, of course. And we also run a charity, and the students get to practice their English by promoting the charity, making posters, things like that. It's a lot of fun. Um, now, of course, again, with uh, COVID-19, we're unable to get together, but we still wanted to create some kind of feeling of community amongst the students. So we've made an online platform, and I'm just going to share it with you now. One moment, please. Okay. Have a look at what we've got. Um, I'll show you this one here. So this is the platform that we are using at the moment. You can see we've put in some information for the students about timetables and also about um, extra things that they need to know. We've got some help and contact details because, of course, um, maybe the students are feeling a little bit isolated, alone in their apartments, so this is just to help them out. And then, of course, you can see along here, we've got all of these different activities that we do every day. Um, I'll just show you a few. We've got here um, opportunities to talk face-to-face -face with the teachers, with Joe or with myself. Yeah, and we also have different mini excursions, virtual excursions. So we've got excursions. This one was to London. We went to London last week. Yep. So we have different museum, virtual museum excursions that the students can go on. What else do we have? Um, oh, one of our teachers is very talented. 
So you can have a quick look here. He played some music for the students. The students had to request a song and he played it for them. We've done cooking as well. We had a cooking show at the beginning. Um, preparation for ski season. Lots of different things here on here. Um, so that's how we're trying to keep a little bit more together, a little bit more of a sense of community while um, COVID is happening. Um, also, what else can I show you? That's one of the things. That's the main thing that we're doing at the moment. Um, we've also got an informal Instagram site that's just for us. We've got the students here. This is um, some of my guys who won the cake that we make for our charity. Um, we had some birds come and visit us, some Australian wildlife that we get we got to touch and hold, which was great. Look at that baby kangaroo. He's so cute. He's sucking his thumb. And of course, Christmas, all of these kind of things that we do together, which is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so that's about sums it up. So when you're here, when the students are here at Kangan, it's not just about learning English, but it's also about feeling together, being part of a team, and also practicing your English in lots of different ways, not just the traditional way. Okay, that's enough for me, I think. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll pass you back to Selda. Thank you, Mira, Joe, and Louise. Um, look, our teachers have done an amazing job under the current circumstances because of COVID. As you know, everybody's had to transition to online, uh, and it was very important for teachers to continue engaging and motivating our students as well as um, ensuring that we we do continue that community sense of uh, that we, we built uh, very strongly within our English Language Centre. So our teachers have done an amazing job with doing that. But we hope to transition face to back to face-to-face um, hopefully, you know, uh, in the next few months. Um, so we look forward to, unfortunately, once the travel restrictions uh, ease, then hopefully we can see you amongst us within the latter part of the year. So I'm going to continue with my presentation because Kangan Institute and Bendigo TAFE just doesn't deliver our English language courses, but we do have a range of vocational courses. So vocational courses might uh, range from Certificate 3 all the way to Diploma Advanced Diploma at uh, one of our respective campuses, whether that be in Melbourne or in Bendigo. Um, I did mention that automotive is one of our popular courses. Um, and if you noticed along the way, we have dedicated handbooks which are translated into Thai. So uh, in the earlier presentation with English language that Mira presented, there is a Thai uh, a handbook of English for English Language Centre in Thai that you can refer to on our website, as well as there is one in automotive here as well for you to, to look at later on our website. So within automotive, we have a two-year training package and this is a very popular course because not only does it include practical placement within our campus at our Docklands campus, which is here, this is also where we deliver our English language uh, courses as well. It's in the heart of uh, Melbourne CBD, very close to the, uh, the river uh, and very close to all of the public transport as well. Uh, this course also includes 700 hours of practical placement and you, you do that practical placement when you are deemed work ready with an employer. Um, so when you complete your English language courses, you have the option of, of applying for any of our vocational courses when you uh, complete uh, upper intermediate or equivalent, it could be also be IELTS uh, as well, um, and go directly into one of our pathway courses that I'll be talking through in the latter slides. Another course option is our fashion courses and beauty as well. Uh, again, we have a, a dedicated uh, handbook for fashion that you can have a look at later. I'm only going to give you an overview of these courses um, and you can either come back to April for some more information or please refer to our website for more information as well. So the students in fashion learn to, des uh, to be designers. Uh, they learn all skills from sewing, pattern making, uh, uh, creating, um, and they are required to display their uh, 
designs on the runway. So this is a picture of our recent runway, um, and these are all created by our design students. Um, we also work very closely with the Victorian Guide Dogs Association, hence why we have a dog on our runway. So we also design clothing for our pets as well. So on YouTube, you can see uh, extracts of our previous fashion shows. Um, so please have a look at that when you have time. Within our beauty program, we offer a diverse range of different skills from a makeup, massage, hair removal, to ensure that uh, students can get employment in a various range of, of centres or diff and when they have wider skills, they are more employable. Courses that we offer is cookery and bakery. Um, in cookery and bakery, uh, we have a training restaurant at the Broadmeadows campus, and this is where students do all of their practical uh, training. Uh, our baking center is above industry standards, um, and this is where students learn uh, to make uh, cakes and uh, breads. Uh, we also offer accounting and IT, and some of the courses in our health and community include nursing, uh, individual support and community services, and these are very popular courses as well. The practical placement for these courses are with hospitals or aged care facilities or doctor's clinics. Now we've just launched our 2021 course guide, which is now up on the website for you to have a look at. Um, so again, please, when you have time, have a look at the information there for the amazing courses that we will continue to offer you for next year. And now I'll open up to our questions. Um, oh, no, I won't. Sorry, I've got some more. So before I move into the questions right at the end, um, I would like to also mention, so in the earlier slides, I did say that once you complete a TAFE qualification, you have the option to pathway to university. So you'll, you'll, Studying doesn't have to stop or your learning doesn't stop once you have completed your TAFE course. Uh, you can transition into a university and we have formalised pathways currently with Torrens and CQ University, plus we are looking at uh, expanding our course pa pathway options with our universities to give you um, some further study options into Bachelor if you should wish to do so. Now we're up to questions. So I'll stop sharing my slide and I will up, I'll open it up to questions. So April, I think you had one earlier and someone asked, are there many Thai students at our campus? Um, we have, yes, uh, we have a good number of Thai students. Uh, however, we do have a diverse range of other nationalities at our campus as well. So in addition to Thai students, we also receive um, high school uh, groups from uh, Korea, we've had high school groups from Taiwan, we have students from Latin South America, Colombia, um, so we do offer a, a mixture, but in, in saying that um, our teachers enforce an English speaking only within the classroom, so uh, whilst there might be some other Thai colleagues within your uh, classroom, um, our teachers are there to ensure that within the classroom you are speaking in English and doing everything you can to practice your English while you are at the centre. Um, do you, the teachers want to add very active in Thailand for many, many years? So, And don't forget, we are a government school, so we have that element of reliability um, and reputation. So we have established a very popular network within, and our brand has become significantly stronger in Bangkok. So we do attract uh, Thai students, um, but it shouldn't stop your learning at all. So I will take it. I think the teachers were going to add to that. At the moment, I have students from Thailand, from Saudi Arabia, from Colombia, and from Taiwan. So I've got a quite a big range of students in one class. Yeah. And similarly, I have students from Colombia. Italy, Thailand, and uh, Brazil. So there you go. There's, there is certainly a mixture. We're lucky in that sense. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. Any other questions, April?
Mira, do you want to answer this one? Oh, so, sorry. The question so, was, I think, sorry. I think the question was, do we take uh, lower level um, English speakers? Yes, we do. So we do have uh, students who do come in with very little English. I mean, they are able to speak some English, but very little English. And we've had students like that in the past as well, uh, who have progressed through very well um, in the first 10 weeks, and they're able to function in society all by themselves because of the interactions that they have with our teachers through all, not just in class, but through the various activities. So we really encourage the students to participate um, in class as well as outside class activities. And, you know, within 10 weeks, we've seen great progress. And I'm sure my teachers will attest to that as well. Absolutely. And what, what I would say as well is that we're very lucky because what, what we find is within the classroom, if a, a student comes in at the at a very low level within the lower class, uh, often uh, we get a lot of help from the other students who also assist them in learning. So we notice that that it really is a team effort, and in general, we're very lucky and have very supportive uh, students as well as, of course, the teachers who be delighted. Yes. Yes. Any more questions, April? So with regards to the English, we'd have to assess you. So we can do that in several ways. Um, you can either take a, an IELTS test, where, however, you are not required, or we can initiate our English placement test. Um, and the entry into any of our vocational courses, uh, you need to be equivalent to IELTS 5.5, which is uh, upper intermediate. Um, so... Yes, we can offer you a package pathway, and normally off the university package, it's a one to one and a half years off the bachelor. So some students choose to apply one by one, so they might first come for English language and then extend their visa within Australia for their vocational course when they're luck, uh, ready, and then they will consider their university options and then apply for university later. Um, but certainly, yes, you can. If you're interested in a, a, a pathway package, we can assist you with that, co uh, providing that we have that pathway for the course you're interested in. So please refer to our website. <laughs> April can assist you with that. <laughs> Yes, that's okay. Um, again, uh, April, we have formalised uh, direct entry partnerships with some English language providers in Melbourne. So if students have completed uh, the agreed level uh, at that respective school, then they, they may be eligible for direct entry into our vocational courses. Everything apart from nursing. Now, to go into the Diploma of Nursing, students must have a formal test like IELTS or TOEFL or OET.
Not at the moment. And the reason being is that if you look at our course prices, they are very competitive, comparative and very competitive as well. So, um, as when uh, Mira was talking about our English language programs, it's only $230 per week, which is, uh, an amazing, uh, price, a weekly price, uh, for, uh, studying within the heart of the CBD at a TAFE institution. So, uh, whilst we don't offer scholarships, I think that our tuition fees are very competitive. Plus, we offer flexibility in terms of payment. Um, so that that's all to help the student as well. Sure. Okay. All right. So thank you very much for watching our live streaming. Um, we hope you've enjoyed our presentation and I'd like to uh, thank our teachers for be, being available as well and introducing our English Language Centre. And we hope that you will consider studying at Kangan Institute in the near future. Uh, we hope that you will stay well and stay safe. Um, and if you have any further questions, please consult um, April and the, the fabulous team there at AIC. Um, I might just leave it to see if the teachers would like to say a, a quick thank you as well. Don't Absolutely. You thank you for... <laughs> well, thank you for listening, everybody. And um, what, what can I say except I really hope to see you sometime soon. Yeah, we hope to welcome you to our institute. Yes, looking forward to seeing you. Hopefully we'll see you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, again. Uh, thank you. Thank you, April. And we'll switch off now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye yeah, everyone. Bye. With Australians staying home to reduce the spread of coronavirus or COVID-19, an increasing number of people are finding themselves with extra time and sanitizer on their hands. While undoubtedly many will spend their newfound hours binge-watching Netflix and hoarding toilet paper, this social distancing time is also a great opportunity to work on learning new skills, discovering online study options, and focusing on self-improvement. So how can you make the most of self-isolation? We've put together our own list of suggestions for those that are after a little inspiration. Learn a new skill. Dedicate some time to developing new skills like cooking, crocheting, or painting. There are a range of fun and inspiring tutorials available on YouTube and online. Enroll in a course. Kangan Institute is offering a huge range of courses supporting online and practical learning, from vet nursing to pathology and nursing to community services. Don't let COVID-19 stand in the way of following your passion. Start a home DIY project. Why not use the extra time to achieve something at home, like paint a room, frame those holiday shots, or go through your wardrobe and donate or upcycle unwanted clothes? Go green and get active in the garden. For those with gardens, we suggest trying your hand at a veggie patch. Those without gardens can give a balcony or windowsill herb patch a go. Catch up with friends online. The best way to overcome self-isolation is to not actually get too isolated. Pick up the phone and give your friends and family a call. Or better yet, arrange a social hour with a group of friends on Skype or FaceTime. Set personal goals and stick to them. Whether your goal is to start each day with an early morning yoga sesh, or get the wheels in motion for a changing career, you can do it from the comfort of your home. Just make sure you set goals you're serious about, dedicate time and fully commit. Start a new book, audiobook or podcast. Take the opportunity to read that book that's been on the shelf for years, listen to an audiobook or get informed with a podcast series. So make the most of self-isolation and try something new. You won't regret it.